Hi hand readers, in last week's video I spoke about the length of the thumb and how it might be disguised by the set of the thumb. Obviously thumbs protrude somewhere from between the base of the index finger and the wrist, but the position of that setting, in other words the level, the height or, or, or the, the depth, might have some influence on the length of the thumb. That is our topic today. My name is Jennifer Hirsch, I'm based in Johannesburg. I've been reading hands and teaching about palmistry and chirology for many years. You'll find all my information below. And please, if you have any particular inquiries, questions, comments, be so welcoming. If you write to me directly, you'll find my email below, as well as if you'd like to comment below this video. Today's video is actually number five in my series on all the factors that one assesses when you're examining a thumb, and there are at least ten. Thumbs are really read to determine strength of character, to look at leadership qualities, to look at will, and many other traits of being, one can say, are related to the strength or weakness of people's thumbs. And an experienced hand reader will, at a mere glance, be able to tell whether or not the person has a strong thumb. Of course, the strength or weakness of the thumb will actually negate or strengthen all the other markings on a set of hands. In harmonious sets of hands, the thumb protrudes from the edge of the hand in a balanced way. In other words, somewhere in the midpoint between the base of the water finger or the index or the Jupiter finger and the wrist. But from time to time we do find thumbs that are particularly low set. In other words, they leave the palm at a very low level or alternatively from time to time, not terribly often, but it does happen that we meet clients or people whose thumbs are set particularly high. It's entirely possible that a high set thumb might appear to be longer than it actually is and a low set thumb might appear to be shorter than it actually is. And here we need to cultivate intuitive sensitivity. I have a firm belief that one third of all hand reading is based in intuition. No matter how scientifically minded you are, and obviously we need that, we need that one third of science to learn a system by which to read the hands. And then we need another third for our delivery and our counseling and coaching. In other words, how we convey our information that's as important as the actual system is. And then the third factor, the third, let's say, slice of the pie, the other third is this intuitive sensitivity that I so encourage my students and I encourage you as a hand reader to cultivate. So the way forward is to like look at that thumb and really see what does it exude, what, what sense do you get from the thumb overall. You can't really measure it that easily. There's a whole lot of criteria, a whole lot of factors to take into consideration, but listen to your intuition when you're looking at thumbs. High set thumbs, like in this image here, speak of a rather more air influence in the person's psyche. So they are less grounded, they're perhaps a little whimsical, perhaps rather shy, might be harder for them to get things done. They have less persistence than the opposed uh, rather low set thumb, which is a much stronger looking thumb, as we'll see in a moment. Could be also, especially if it's a very firm little thumb, there's an added level of obstinacy, perhaps more fixed in opinion. That's a possibility there. There are many different possible meanings. Of course, everything's always offset by so much else in terms of the actual length of the thumb, the flexibility of the thumb, the dermatoglyphic on the tip of the thumb, and many other criteria. Of course, not to mention all the rest of the markings in the hands themselves. We can consider here some uh, type of emotional control or controlling trait if that particular little thumb, that high set thumb, is very stiff. Other traits related to a very high set thumb will include perhaps a rather childlike quality in the person. They're likely to be far more dependent than those with low set thumbs. And also the high set thumb, I would suggest, has some bearing on the person's self-esteem. In other words, it would be a reducing factor in terms of their sense of self-worth in the world. Whereas high set thumbs add air influence, low set thumbs, like in this image, add earth influence. Here's a person who's more grounded, more persistent, stronger will. This is more of the leader as opposed to the person with a high set thumb, which would be more of a follower. Um, there's a kind of a determination, there's a sense of physicality. They are probably quite good with their hands. If you think of the archetypal game ranger, stroke explorer, adventurer, here you've got a person who's very likely to have low set thumbs. But also, although low set thumbs have got some very positive traits attached, such as independence, getting things done, coping well with change, and a certain kind of physicality, as I said, there's also the underbelly, the sort of rather unredeemed, the negative side of a very low set thumb, which one also needs to possibly factor in, such as perhaps more brutality, less spiritual refinement. You've got a person here who might be more controlling, more bossy, perhaps unkind even, perhaps uh, very... Um, dominating or domineering, 
So one always looks at many factors. You never read one factor, one cry, um, marking rather in isolation. This is such a strong thing throughout palmistry, and people sometimes, you know, newcomers will take a hand and say, "Oh, you've got a teacher's square. You're a great teacher," and not forgetting, or rather forgetting, to look, for example, at the baby finger to see how that person articulates. So I've digressed a moment, but always I just want to emphasize, please just never take one factor into isolation. In isolation, one always must cross-reference the rest of the hand. So the high-set thumb shows dependency, whereas the low-set thumb is a much more independent, open, generous person for the most part. I mentioned at the start there are at least 10 factors to assess when you're looking at thumbs. So far I've covered murderous thumbs, angles of confidence, the actual length of the thumbs, the relative lengths of the two phalanges, and um, today, of course, the set of the thumb. And ne in next week's video, which will be the sixth little mini tutorial, I'll talk about the bendiness or straightness of thumbs. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends, and see you next week. Bye.